By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are going to enjoy a finals of X points. This is final number 30. Wow, so many finals. Uh, they, they hold a tournament every single month. And of course, then they have a final every month. And I'm really happy to show you these finals because it's always a lot of fun for me to look at. I'm looking at new players, new decks. It's just very interesting for me. In case you don't know what X points is, it's basically Atlantic old school with a points list. So here you can see the list. It means that certain cards have points allocated to them and you cannot spend more than 10 points in total in your deck. So you kind of have to look at what cards you can and what cards you cannot play. Um, you know, so there's this limit that will create a more balanced field. I think that's the idea behind it. Now, if you want to know more about X points, check out the description below because there you will find a link to their Facebook page and also more information. And I think also a link to their YouTube uh, channel because they also have a YouTube channel where you can check out more X points content. Now, uh, in today's episode, we have Oliver with uh, blue, black, and red, a good stuff deck, and he's taking Ishan, uh, taking on Ishan, and Ishan is playing a pink tax deck. So that's red and white with land tax and a lot of little critters. Now, before I start with the deck tech section of this video, because I've got lovely deck photos once again of both of these decks, I would first like to point out that as always, you can also choose to first go to the matches, check out the decks later. I know some people prefer to do that, the easiest way to go uh, ahead with this is by checking out the description below because there you will find several timestamps. One of the timestamps reads MTG Games. So click on there. It'll take you straight to the game action. And in that same description below, you can also find a link to my Patreon page. That is patreon.com slash timmytalks. And on that page, you can find out how you can become a sponsor of the show, how you can become a patron of the show. And actually, Ishan, who's in this final, is a patron of the show. So Ishan, man, I'm very proud of you for reaching the X points finals. We know each other, we played against each other, and it's great to see that you've reached the finals of this tournament because it's got a lot of players and you really need to get to, get to a high level if you wanna get into the X points finals these days. Talking about the finals, if you wanna see more of the finals, check out the X points playlist that's probably popping up right now because there are a lot more X points matches and X points finals to be found in that playlist. Okay, now that you're fully informed about all the links and everything else, I'm going to continue with the deck decks. I'm going to start with the deck of Oliver. So that is uh, blue, black, red, good stuff. Let's have a look. And here we see the deck of Oliver Carlson. So this is blue, black, red, and he's called it good stuff. And I can understand why, because, you know, he's chosen just a lot of good cards from these colors, right? We see, of course, the counter spells, the burn package in red with the lightning bolts. He's playing with two uh, fireballs. We also see a, a power card here with Ancestral Recall. That's a high pointed card, of course. And then we also see the Demonic Tutor. If you play black, you're gonna play for the Tutor. I think the Tutor gets even better in a deck with Ancestral Recall and also in a deck with uh, with burn because sometimes you just need to pick up that last burn piece to, uh, to win the game. We also see uh, the Brain Geyser, of course, for extra card draw. Uh, when we're looking at the creature base, we really see uh, some of the best creatures in the colors, right? Setch Troll is just an amazing creature. When you're playing with black, almost everybody boards this creature in. One, one red and two for a 2-2 two, two that gets plus one, plus one if you control a swamp. So it becomes a 3-3 three, three for three mana, which is really good in old school. And then for one black, you can also regenerate it. So, I mean, that's amazing. You know, for three mana, a 3-3 three, three regenerator, that is fantastic value. Talking about value, we also have Darylor here in the deck. And Darylor is a 4-4 four, for four, four. It's basically the best thrall. And the ironic thing about this thrall is that you cannot really play it in a thrall deck because of the downside, because it also reads your black spells cost an additional black to cast. So um, if you just splash Darylor in your deck, it's really easy to, to play him because it doesn't have an effect on the other cards in your deck because you're hardly playing with any black, right? Also, this deck of Oliver, the only black card he's playing with besides a playset of Darylors is the Demonic Tutor. Now, a little side note, though, is that they do uh, make it so that your the second Darylor you want to cast, if there's already a Darylor in play, is going to cost an extra black, which can sometimes be a bit of a hassle in these decks that uh, splash a color like Oliver is doing. And then what I find interesting about this deck is that he's chosen not to go for the Surrender Befreed. Like a lot of decks, I think, would go for Surrender Befreed, Setch Troll, Darylor, because they're all really cheap to cast. 
and then you have that kind of aggro style and then you've got your red burn to finish it off. That really seems to fit together, but he's chosen to go more for a fatty, which I like, Mahamoti Jin. I think Mahamoti Jin, just an iconic card of the game, isn't it? It's a 5-6 flyer, but it, it is pretty costly. It's 6 mana. Uh, when we are looking at the deck, he doesn't have a lot of ramp. There's a little bit of, of ramp in the form of the Felwer Stone. And one of those reasons is that in X points, of course, because uh, certain cards are, have points to them, it's kind of tough to play with a lot of Mox. And I think the Mox in the current uh, a points list are two points. So he could have gone for, uh, for example, the Mox Jet, the, the Mox Ruby, and the Mox Sapphire. So the three Mox, and that would have sent him back six points, and he wouldn't be able anymore to play with, for example, an Ancestral Recall. So it's kind of difficult to make those choices. Are you going to ramp a little bit more? But at the cost of what, you know? And and that's the thing with X points. You always have this puzzle to make with the points. Um, but overall, this is looking like a strong deck. I'm not surprised that uh, it has reached the finals. I'm also liking the two IC manipulators in this deck. It's a very versatile card. It's really good. And the nice thing about an IC is it can kind of like tap down your opponent's big creature until later in the game where you can kind of steal it with the control magic. And because it's so flexible, remember, you can also use it to, for example, tap down lands, which can be really annoying, especially when you're playing against a player who's playing with multiple colors. Um, talking about the player that he's going to play against, let's take a look at the deck of his opponent, Ishan's Pink Tax deck. And here we see the deck of Ishan. So this is Pink Taxes, right? And uh, it revolves around a this combo with uh, Lantex and Lance Edge. So Lantex is an enchantment from Legends for one white, and that reads, during your upkeep, if you have less lands than your opponent, you may search for three basic lands, show them to your opponent and put them in your hand. Uh, and then of course, Lance Edge is this enchant world, also from Legends, uh, that says you can discard a card from your hand whenever you want. If it's a land card, you can deal two damage to your opponent. Right, And this goes both ways. So also your opponent can start discarding lands to deal two damage to you. So basically what this deck wants to do, uh, to do is collect a lot of lands via the land tax, discard them to the lands edge and kill your opponent by basically throwing your lands at him, uh, which is a funny idea, right? And he's combining this with the aggressiveness of white and red because if we're looking at the creature base we see savannah lines which is cheap to cast we see cajun javelinier which is cheap to cast we see or uh, iron claw orcs uh, we see uh, the white knight so these are all cheap creatures to cast so that means you can cast them turn one cast them turn two turn them sideways start dealing damage on top of that he's playing with direct damage in the form of lightning bolts and chain lightnings you know he can throw that at his opponent so this is a deck that can really go off fast before you know it as as an opponent you'll be down to like 10 points and then he can finish that of course with the land tax and the lance edge by throwing lance at you you know and finishing the game that way um because x points tends to be a creature heavy meta we do see that he's also playing with uh four swords to plowshares now swords to plowshares can sometimes feel kind of awkward because you're also giving life to your opponent obviously it's an amazing card you know one one white for an instant that can just remove a creature from the game that's insane uh, but you are giving your opponent some life, meaning you're giving him a little bit of more time, which is something that this deck really doesn't want to do. But I do think it's a good inclusion, especially because it removes creatures from the game, meaning you cannot regenerate them. So for example, in this matchup, it is perfect against the Setch Troll. Uh, now when we're looking at the rest of the deck, what I really like here is that he's chosen to go uh, with Winds of Change in this deck. Winds of Change is a card for one red. Uh, what it does is all, all the cards in your hand, you're going to shuffle them back into your library and you're going to draw that many cards. Now, obviously, that's going to be minus the Winds of Change. So you are setting yourself back a card. But I think in a deck like this, where sometimes you really just need to find that land's edge, you know, to start uh, to start taking benefits from the land text, for example, uh, you know, uh, the Winds of Change can help you to kind of go through your deck. Sometimes you just need that one bolt to finish the game. Again, Winds of Change can help you with that. So I really understand that Winds of Change is in this deck. Also, Winds of Change is some nice synergy, of course, with Lantex. Sometimes you just have uh, a handful of lands because of your Lantex and you can't really do anything with it. You don't have, for example, a Lance Edge. You don't have any pressure on the board. What you can do then, of course, is you can play your Winds of Change and you can find like seven new spells. I mean, that's that is pretty cool. I'm actually kind of inspired by seeing this Winds of Change in this uh, Lantex deck. I'm, I'm sure it's done before, but it reminds me of the fact of, hey, wait a minute, Lantex and Winds of Change, that's a pretty good combination of cards. So Ishan, well done, man. Um, looking at your sideboard, what do we see? We see some uh, red Elemental Blast, so that could come in against some of the, 
the blue uh, the blue cards there on the on the side of Oliver. We see a city in a bottle. I don't think that's going to do much. I also don't think that the vices are going to be that powerful. Perhaps the disenchants could work and the uh, COP red could be an inclusion as well after uh, the first game. Okay, we've looked at the deck of Ishan. We've looked at the deck of Oliver. That means we're ready. Let's go to X points. Final number 30. Game number one of X points. Finals 30 is on its way. And we see Ishan sitting there on the bottom of your screen. So he is playing his pink tax deck and he's taking on Oliver at the top. So he's got his uh, URB good stuff deck. So blue, red, and black. And there we see a double mulligan, by the way, here by Ishan, who is on the play. That is tough. So he only has three cards left in hand. That is pretty brutal. And no early pressure as well. Hopefully he can find, for example, a land tax and the winds of change. There's the Savannah Alliance. Three cards in hand, no land drop, passing a turn. There's a quick lightning bolt and step by Oliver. So that line is toast. Oliver here playing another Volcanic Island. There is a Felwer Stone and a pass. So I think if you're, uh, if you're Ishan here, you're really hoping to find that land tax. I mean, that's the thing that can still get you back into this land tax, Winds of Change. That can make it happen for you. Three cards in hand here. Looks like he's a little bit in the tank, perhaps thinking about playing another land. Four in hand, and it looks like he's going to pass. Ooh, that is tough. There is an island here, so four mana for Oliver. Doesn't have a black mana to play, for example, a Daryl Lore. Does, of course, have a full playset of Setch Trolls and two Mahamoti Jins in the deck. Okay, there's the tax. Ooh, counterspell, though. That is unfortunate. That is, of course, a risk that you're taking. There we see a Chain Lightning here, apparently on the life total of Oliver. Dropping to 17. But that Lantex really needed to stick here for Ishan. That is really tough that I could counter it away by Oliver. Oliver not putting any pressure on the board, so at least that's something here. There we see a Savannah Alliance. And a pass, so three cards in hand for Ishan. Oliver having, I believe, six in hand at the moment. Gonna go back up to five. There's a set stroll. So finding some pressure, doesn't have a black source though, no black mana, uh, swamps I should say. So it's just a 2-2 without regeneration. There's a lightning bolt killing here the, uh, the troll. And that means that Ishan can attack for two here to Oliver putting him on 15. That's exactly what's happening here. Dropping to 15. There's a chain lightning. Gonna go to 12. And there's the pass turn, two cards in hand here. For Ishan, I believe, six in hand for Oliver. I wonder if Oliver now has got a, like a Darylor in hand, thinking, oh man, I really need a black mana. Gonna tap three again, another Sedge. There's another Sedge troll. Remember, it's just a 2-2. Two -two. There's the uh, untap here by Ishan. Needs to untap the line still. A little technicality. There's a Chain Lightning here, so finding a lot of Chain Lightnings and Bolts. Taking care of the Sedge, attacking for two, so already halved Oliver's life. He's on 10 at the moment. And Ishan, despite the fact that he only started with five cards, he's still on 20. Oliver now in the tank, trying to think what can he do. Already lost two Trolls. He's quite unlucky, it seems, with the uh, with the mana. Okay, this is something. Strip mine could strip away the red source. That must be tempting. Looks like he's not going to do it, though. He's going to play another set, keeping counter magic open. No, playing a shatter. Oh, that shatter is quite good. Taking care of the white mana. That means that Ishan, even if he draws into a Lantex, cannot play it out. There is a Swords to Plowshares here on the Troll. That means two more life for Oliver, but of course he's going to lose that next turn. I do think it's a, it's a good play here by Ishan. Two cards in hand, only one red land, and a Lion. That's all that he has. Okay, there's a, a land here. So Ishan being very conservative with the lands, knows that his deck doesn't need a lot of lands, so um, he'd rather keep them in hand. Remember... 
Oliver is not playing with Mind Twist, so he doesn't have to worry about that. Also not playing with Balance. Oliver now on 8. Are we going to see a Mahamoti? Papa Modi hitting the board! And this could be quite tough, of course, since Ishan just played out that Swords to Plowshares. And things can go quick if you're looking, uh, if you're playing against a Mahamoti. Tapping to white here. Okay, there's a white knight. At least, I mean, the upside here for Ishan is that at least Oliver has to tap the Modi if, if he wants to attack with it, meaning he'll take four damage on the crackback. But this is an interesting decision for Oliver to make. Exactly, I do understand this because if you attack, Oliver's on eight, right? That's a very low life total. Two cards in hand here. This is quite an exciting game one, by the way. Four cards in hand for Oliver. Two cards in hand for Ishan. Passing the turn here by Oliver. Ishan taking the turn, going up to three. Passing the turn as well. So both players kind of in top decking mode, trying to find that one card that's uh, gonna, gonna make them the dominant player. Give them the edge that they need here to start playing more aggressively. Four in hand, looks like also a pass again here by Ishan. Ooh, there's a black source. There's a Darylor, 4-4 four, four, throw. And I mean, this does make a change because now Oliver can attack keeping the, uh, the throw on blocking duty. So he could swing in, 4-5, or he could be more conservative, choosing the more conservative route, realizing that he's playing against a lot of burn. So perhaps next turn he can play out another Darylor. I mean, who knows? Looked like Ishander wanted to tap down the mountain, perhaps for a bolt or a chain on Oliver's life total. Now remember, the white knight has, of course, first strike. So one of the things he can do is attack with the knight, combine it with some burn. Problem, of course, is that the Mahamoti Jin has six toughness. That's really a tough Jin to crack. Five cards in handy for Ishan, passing the turn to Oliver. There's a City of Brass here by Oliver. Four cards in hand for him. There's the attack by Papa Modi. Looks like he's going to drop here, or does he have a Swords to Plowshares? Nope, he's going to take five, going to drop to 15. Now remember, White Knight has protection from black, so he can attack here with the White Knight. Deal two points of damage. Putting Oliver on six, meaning you only need two uh, chains or a bolt in a chain to kind of win the game. Now, obviously, he's already played out quite a lot of burn. So I don't think he's got those cards in hand, but still attacking here for two. Remember, protection from black cannot block with the Darylor. Oliver dropping to six. Are we going to see some burn? I think if he had the, the burn, he would have played it already. Of course, Oliver is playing with four counter spells. Only played out one counter spell so far and has a lot of blue open. So it is a risky move. Ishan a little bit in the tank here. Five cards in hand. Looks like he wants to tap the plateau. Thinking about it. Tapping the mountain. Are we going to see a burn spell? Tapping both here, untapping them again. What is he going to do? Winds of change. Interesting. There we see a counter spell. I mean, and this is what I talked about in the deck deck as well. Why I think winds of change is, is so good in the deck of Ishan. You know, of course it works great with the land text, but also without the land text, you could have a situation like this against Oliver where you kind of want to, you know, find some more burn, you know, or maybe find that one fireball. And then winds of change can really help you to accomplish that. But it got countered away by Oliver. Now it's Oliver's turn again. He could, of course, attack again with the Modi. Putting Ishan here on 10. He could also consider attacking now with the Darylor since the White Knight is tapped. So maybe keep the Mahamoti on blocking duty. No, he's attacking with Papa Modi. Does that mean that he maybe has another creature that he can now cast? So Oliver dropping, uh, sorry, uh, Ishan dropping to 10 just to pass by Oliver. So he can attack now with the Knight. Put Oliver here on 4. 
Ooh, he's going to tap some stuff down. Look at that. What is he going to do? There's a Lance Edge. Now the question is, does he have... No, there's a counter spell though. I want to say, does he have Lance in hand? Two Lance would have been enough. Remember, Oliver's on four. And there's the pass. And I think the counter spells are really, really good for Oliver here in this matchup. Attacking here with both. Putting a pressure on. I think this is a good attack. Chump blocking the... Darylor, oh, there's a fireball finishing the game here. Game number one, finished by a fireball. And uh, I have to say, Ishan got really, really close. Remember, he started with a double mulligan, and those counter spells really helped Oliver staying alive. And I wonder now, because both players are going to dive into their sideboards, if we are going to see red elemental blasts coming in uh, from the side of, uh, of Ishan here to try to do something against the counter magic of Oliver. But anyway, uh, we're going to let these both players uh, um, sideboard. That's what I'm trying to say. And we will catch back up with them in game uh, number two. Game number two. Here we go. So we've got Ishan on the play after losing that first game. Let's take a look if both players are going to keep their hands. Looks like they are. Really cool playmats by both players, by, by the way. Surrendered by, Frit, uh, by Ishan and a really nice... Uh, Double ganger by Oliver. And this is a grand opening by Ishan, by the way. This is what you want to do when you're playing Lantex, right? Mox Pearl into Lantex past turn. This is just ideal. Putting Oliver in an awkward position. He is to choosing to just play out the land, playing out of Batlands. And now the tax is activated. So I think we're going to see a completely different game than in game one. Now remember in game one, Ishan had to go down to five cards and couldn't really get an active tax in, in that match. But now he does, so he can look up the basics. A mountain, a mountain, and a plains. So going up here. Okay, we see that shuffle. Every day I'm shuffling. I think that, I think uh, he's a magic player, the artist that, that wrote that song. It's gotta be. So much shuffling going on. Now drawing a card for turn. So that means he's got like nine cards in hand, right? I believe. I'm expecting him just to play out a land here, maybe play out a creature, Savannah Lions, Hikation Javelin here, perhaps even a White Knight, you know, put some pressure here on Oliver. There we see a White Knight, 2-2, two, two, First Striker, Pro Black. Passing a turn here to Oliver. Maybe Oliver wants to play exactly Lightning Bolt and Step. Killing the Knight by a Bolt. It's got to be painful, especially when you're wearing all that armor. That's kind of like a conductor. There's the Demonic Tutor. Interesting. What is he going to look up? Is he just going to be an Ancestral Recall, Ancestral for three? Or does he have better options? Passing the turn here, of course, because already had his land drop. Two lands, meaning an activation here for, uh, for Ishan. A plains, a plains, and a mountain. Again, shuffling. A lot of shuffling with the land tax. And of course, Oliver also still shuffling. Because of that demonic. I really wonder what card he looked up. Now remember, Oliver also has a full grip of cards, right? So, this could be a very interesting game too. And I thought game one already was quite entertaining. Really nice, uh, nice game to look at. Really cool to see these two decks uh, going face to face. Here in uh, finals, X points 30. There we see a mountain, tapping the mountain and winds of change. Oh, this is really nice. That winds of change after the demonic tutor play by Oliver. Oh, oh, that is, oh man. That is quite some good magic here by, uh, by Ishan. And like I said in the uh, in the deck tech section, perhaps you haven't watched that part yet, but I talked about Winds of Change being really good with land techs, and here we can see why. Wow, but that, I mean, that Winds of Change now almost works as a counter spell for that Demonic Tutor play. Just fantastic here. Bad news for Oliver, of course. And again, both players are shuffling. Every day we're shuffling. You know, that, that's the thing, man. It's the life of a Magic player. Shuffling, shuffling, shuffling. Counting the cards. Lots of cards in hand there. For both players, but especially Ishan. 
I wonder what he's going to do next. I mean, ideally, you just want to find like Savannah Lions, Acacian Javelin here or something. Just kind of emptying your hand and putting some pressure on the board. It's going to tap both whites here. Let's see what he's going to do. Of course, the red already tapped. Another land tax and another land tax. Okay, just wanting to empty his hand. Doesn't want to discard the tax. Passing the turn. And I wonder if you're Oliver like... Do you want to play another land? You probably have to or else your deck doesn't function, but it's kind of tough. Felwer Stone would be nice. Okay, there's a Felwer. He could just uh, pass turn. Exactly. I kind of understand this pass. I believe he passed. Yeah, I, I understand this pass because you've got Felwer Stones. So that means you've got a burn open. The, uh, the taxes are not going to work here because two lands for Oliver, two lands for Ishan. And here we see uh, Ishan drawing a card, probably card number eight. Tapping two, are we going to see a creature? There's a white knight. We haven't seen a single Iron Claw Orc. That kind of makes me sad. I think the Orc is such a cool creature. Haven't seen a single one. There are four in the deck, though, of Ishan. Pass turn to Oliver again, putting Oliver in a little bit of an awkward position, or not. Just playing a fireball on the knight. I mean, those knights are having a tough day, man. I mean... The first one got bolted. Now the brother is getting a, a fireball. There we see a lion. Tapping two more. Hey, Iron Claw Orc. There is the Orc. The 2-2. Two -two. The Grizzly Bear of, uh, of Red. The funny thing about Iron Claw Orc is that it didn't get a print in uh, Revised. It got printed again in 4th edition and of course in Unlimited. I believe this is an uh, Unlimited copy here that we see on the board. So next turn, Ishan can swing in for 4. Now the interesting thing of this game is that even though a lot of things have happened already, both players are still on 20. They're really kind of fighting for control in this match. You can see Oliver really being in the tank here. For example, if he's got a Setch in hand, he could play it out, but then he cannot regenerate it. One of the things he could do is, you know, play out a land, get a Satch, keep a black open to regenerate. Looks like he's looking something up. Going through his hand again. I mean, it's he's really in a tough position here. I mean, let's say he's got a Satch in hand. Would you play out this Satch without regeneration? Or would you say, I'm just going to drop the land so I can regenerate? Yeah, it does have that set troll. I thought so. I, th I think this is, I mean, both decisions have something that you can say, okay, this is why I would do A or this is why I do B. I guess the most important thing is that you think about it and make a conscious decision. And I mean, you got to keep in the back of your mind that if you don't play a creature, you're going to take four. If you play a creature and he's got, you know, burn like a bolt or something, he's going to kill it on the spot. So you don't want to do that. So at least now the Setch kind of stops the, the, the Savannah Line Iron Claw Orc from coming in, right? Unless, of course, Ishan's got, got a Swords to Plowshares. That would be, I think, the worst scenario for Oliver here, if he also has a Swords, because then he can Swords to Troll, uh, attack for four, you know. Put him on 19, which is not a big deal. But still. And here we see uh, Ishan again shuffling. It shouldn't be every day I'm shuffling. It should be every turn I'm shuffling. So let's see what he can do here. And are we also going to see a Lance Edge at a certain point in this game? Okay, tapping a white here. What are we going to see? There's the swords, yeah, that's, that's a bad scenario. And there's the attack. I mean, it doesn't take a lot of damage yet, but it's just annoying that you lose that creature and you gave your opponent attacks activation. Oliver dropping here to 19. And is Ishan going to play something else out? He is, he's tapping two. There's another Iron Claw Orc, more pressure on the board. Discarding here a planes, it seems. So seven in hand, discarding the planes, passing the turn. I mean, if you're Oliver, 
you just need another creature, right? For example, Darylor would be quite nice. And just hope that, uh, that Ishan is, is going to run out of his removal at a certain point. Now remember, Oliver, of course, does have some removal as well. Also has uh, Control Magics in the deck. Playing with four bolts, playing with two fireballs, I believe. Okay, there's another land. Could be a fire, no, not a fireball, probably. Okay, playing an icy manipulator. Okay, so this icy is kind of okay. The problem is it costs you a, a land to mana to activate and it only taps down one of the, one of the three creature threats. But uh, it's better than nothing, you know, for sure. So perhaps Oliver wants to do something in the upkeep. I guess he doesn't. He probably wants to keep the icy open to tap down one of the creatures. And again, we see Ishan here looking up some more basics. Maybe these are the last basics in his deck. I mean, look at his deck. It's pretty thinned out. <laughs> Take the, the lance for turn, draw a card for turn. I mean, you know if you're playing against a land tax deck that as soon as they have that tax activation, it just feels so bad. But then again, you cannot let yourself be taken a hostage by this, uh, this enchantment, you know. It's very difficult to kind of, you know, play against, uh, against attacks here. Especially attacks turn one. Remember, you had that Mox Pearl into land tax. That's like a dream opening for a, uh, for a tax player. There's the Chain Lightning. And now we're seeing a lot of damage here. Oliver is on 12 after this uh, turn by Ishan, who's passing. What can Oliver do? Also, more pressure on the board here by Ishan. And remember, Oliver doesn't really have a board wipe. Doesn't you know? Doesn't play with white. Doesn't have Raph. I don't think he plays with uh, Nevernor's disc. So it's just really tough for him. So here's a Chaos Orb, which is okay, but it's just a one for one trade, though. Is he going to activate the Chaos Orb here? He's going to flip on one of the creatures. Let's see if he hits. Oh, misses as well. Ay, ay, ay. It did seem he went kind of like hasty with the flip. And it was a very active flip. Like it rotated multiple times there. I think even if it would have hit, you know, he, he, he still would be in trouble. You know, that means one creature or less. You tap down the other creature. You still take four points of damage. Oh, there are still basics there in the hand of, uh, of Ishan. He's just being a little bit conservative with digging them up. Probably because he doesn't want to discard them all because remember he's got that Lance Edge somewhere in the deck as well that he can use to deal extra points of damage to Oliver. Oliver on 12, probably gonna drop here to six. Draw for turn here by Ishan. And Oliver probably gonna tap down here one of the attacking creatures. Probably a Savannah Lines. Yep, okay. There's the attack for six. Gonna drop to six. What else are we gonna see? A COP red, okay. So COP red, obviously a card coming in from this sideboard. After of course getting killed by that fireball in, uh, in game number one. So he's got some protection now, discarding some basics here, passing the turn. So Oliver is gonna get another turn. What can he do? If he can find another blocker, you know, then at least he can survive another turn if there's no bolt or chain on the side of, uh, of Ishan. Tapping three here. Are we going to see another Setch? There's a Setch troll with a swamp open to regenerate and a land open to tap down a creature. So it looks like he's definitely going to survive another turn. Unless, of course, Ishan has some burn or maybe a Lance Edge. First going to... Use the tax again, finding some more basics. And then guess what he's going to do? He's going to shuffle every turn. I'm shuffling. I really, I, I got to listen to that song now. It's in my head. Sorry, guys. I apologize. And girls, whoever's watching. I apologize. Okay, three lanes for the Ishan, man. I mean, I think he's got to win this, right? If Oliver can still manage to win this game, then he's a deserved winner of X-Points 30 for sure. Remember, Oliver is up a game. So if Ishan wins this, it's just a 1-1 and we're going to go to a third deciding game. 
to see he's going to crown himself the champion of X Point 30. And there we see the tap. There we see the attack, of course, going full aggro. Probably gonna lose a line here. Okay, Iron Claw Orc instead. Four points of damage for Oliver. So he's dropping to two. Are we gonna see a bolt? Nope, we're not. Just a discard in the pass, so no Lance Edge as well. Another uh, basic there being discarded, Plateau and a Mountain there. So a duel and a basic, passing the turn. Oliver having another turn to go. And this is what you're doing when you're an Oliver, you're on survival mode. You're like, okay, he's got three creatures, I've got two answers, and I'm scooping. <laughs> I thought he would, I, I mean, Oliver, I kind of felt that maybe you were going to play another solution that would have been really cool, but it didn't happen. What is really cool, though, is that it means it's now 1-1. One, one. Uno, uno! So we are going to game! Number three, game number three, here we go. It's 1-1, one, one. Oliver on the play after losing game two. And this is the finals of X points 30. Whoever wins this game crowns himself the champion of the month. We see an island being played by Oliver, which looks really nice with that play mat of the Vesuvian Doubleganger. Passing the turn here. Ooh, another turn one tax here for Ishan. I mean, he is finding those taxes. There's a Felward pass, so there's an island, meaning Ishan is at least going to get one tax activation here. Land tax, it's so much value. Such an insane card. And again, of course, he's going to shuffle after this. There are the three basics. And then he's going to shuffle up and draw for turn. It looks like he's... Uh, Going through his deck, maybe checking out how many basics he has, but I'm sure he knows though. Anyway, shuffling up again, then going to draw his card for turn. So that means he's going to go up to 10 cards, I believe, in total. And I mean, this is really a great start for Ishan again. Also not a bad start for Oliver with the ramp with the Felwer. Perhaps next turn he can uh, find a good duel and maybe play, uh, play a Sedge or play a Darylor. Or keep counter magic open. Everything's still possible for him. Maybe he doesn't even want to play out another uh, another land. Here we see a Savannah Lines. And we see a Mountain. So that Savannah can uh, put some pressure on the life total of Oliver next turn. There we see a discard of a basic Mountain. So 7 in hand, I guess, for Ishan here passing the turn. There's a City of Brass. Tapping four, there's a Darylor. So a 4-4 four, four summon thrall from Fallen Empires, art by Anson Maddox. So there's the pass of the turn. That means that Savannah Line is not going to do much. And then, of course, we do see the uh, tax activation there. For a moment, Ishan wanted to draw his card for turn already, but reminded himself just in time, the nick of time, that he had that tax activation. An ideal situation here for um, Ishan would be, of course, if he can find his swords. Sorting the Darylor, attacking with the lions, playing a land. And I wonder if in this game we're going to see uh, the Lance Edge finding its way on the table. Haven't seen it yet in, uh, in the previous games. So now he's drawing for turn. I believe 11 cards in hand, if I'm not mistaken. That's quite a lot. The question is, can he do anything? Playing a strip mine. Strip mine is quite versatile in this uh, situation. You can play to activate your tax by taking care of a land of your own. Or, of course, you can uh, attack the mana base here of Oliver, kind of forcing him to play something else out. Ooh, going to go for the island here. I would have been tempted to go for the City of Brass instead, kind of cutting him off uh, of black. Then again, by allowing him to have the City of Brass, he's still going to take the damage. So, I mean, there's something to say for that line as well. And remember, uh, you know, Ishan obviously has a very aggressive deck. So, uh, ooh, there's the attack. Talking about aggression here. Oliver going into the red zone. 
with a Derelor. Dealing four points of damage here. Ishan dropping to 16. I wonder if that means that he's got another plane. No, he doesn't. Passing the turn. But Oliver, of course, still pretty high up on life. He can take two points of damage here. There's the attack. Are we going to see a bolt on the line, though? Yep, there's the bolt on the line. And also, Oliver didn't play out a land, so that means that uh, Ishan doesn't have the tax activation at this point. Playing out another line, passing the turn. Oliver can actually do quite a lot with just three, uh, three mana. Ideally for him, he would find uh, perhaps another Felwer Stone. There's the attack with the 4-4. Four, four. Is Ishan going to drop you to 12? Yes, he is. Another option could have been to chump, of course, on the line and perhaps play a bolt on the Darylor, but that's kind of a two-for-one that you don't want to do here. So we're probably going to see an attack here by the lion. And if you're Ishan, you're really hoping to find a sword to plowshares to kind of take care of the Darylor. The thing is, you know, if you can create a board state, um, you know, where you put some pressure on, uh, on Oliver. Oh, look at this, just discarding passing. This is great news for Oliver. What I wanted to say is if you can kind of take care of Darylor, attack with the Lions, then you're in a way also forcing Oliver to do something and perhaps, you know, play out another land. Okay, here we see the Bolt on the Lion and then the attack with the Darylor. The Darylor has done some work. 12 points of damage by this Darylor. He is the king of the mountain. He is the throw on the ape rock. I, I thought we were going to see another swords, but we're going to see another Savannah lines instead. Ishan not finding any swords to plowshares. This is really rough. This is Savannah lines number four. And despite the fact that Ishan has had some activations with the tax, cannot really benefit from it. There's another mountain. So basically giving Oliver an opportunity here to play out another land as well. It's looking really good here for Oliver. I mean, I didn't expect that Darylor to deal 12 points of damage. Ishan's on 8. I mean, turn the Darylor sideways. Let's see what happens. Worst case scenario, he's going to, you know, block and bolt. That's 2 for 1. And maybe Oliver has counter magic up, you know? It's really risky. He is weighing out his options. I mean, let's say you've got a counter spell in hand and maybe another creature you could play. Then, of course, you're first going to attack and play out that creature after if you want to in your second main. Tapping two here. Oh, Fireball for one. So this was the consideration. Interesting. Look at the life total of Ishan. He's dropped to four. 16 points of damage by a single Darylor. Man, never underestimate the power of Darylor. And I mean, if you're Ishan, you need at least you need to play a blocker and not an Iron Claw Orcs. Oh, Iron Claw Orcs. That's the worst. Iron Claw Orcs cannot block a creature with power greater than one, I believe. They're like Orcs are very coward, cowardice creatures. You just have to say, you know, go forward, go and attack. Because as soon as they see that there are big creatures, they kind of try to, uh, to hide in a corner. I think this Darylor is going to win the game here. There's the attack with the Darylor. I don't think he can block here with the Iron Claw Orc. I think it's just going to take the damage. There is a Lightning Bolt. That's not going to help though. No, there's the game here for Oliver. Wow, look at that. On the top of the deck were two swords to plowshares. I mean, this is, this is the toughest, meanest, Baddest Darylor that I've ever seen. MVP of this finals in X Points 30. Oliver, congratulations. You have won X Points number 30 with your Darylor. I don't know what you what you gave your Darylor for food in the, in the morning for breakfast, but uh, I want to have a portion as well. Anyway, congratulations. 
Ishan, man, I thought when you had that text activation again in game three, I thought maybe this is gonna be your match. Didn't happen, couldn't find the answer to the Daryl or couldn't find a single source. It is what it is. This is what magic is like as well from time to time, right? It, uh, it does happen. Anyway, this was X Points Finals number 30. Thank you very much for watching. Before you go, please take a moment to like, share, and comment on this video. All these things are free and really help the channel move forward. And here we can see the winning deck again by Oliver. Now, if you uh, are not a subscriber yet, also please consider becoming a subscriber. Hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. Okay, thank you for that. And uh, before you go, I just want to mention this, just like what I mentioned at the intro of this video, I do have a Patreon page as well. So if you enjoy the content that I make, please consider becoming a patron like Ishan and support Timmy Talks. The cool thing is it already starts for just $1 a month. Check out patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. And for that support, you do get some perks. Uh, you can access to the Timmy Talks Discord. You can join in the online tournaments that we organize every once in a while. And of course, your name will be mentioned in the end scroll. What end scroll? This end scroll. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Ik het als vinkertje somber gezien.